we just have fun with it and the live version and uh, or we try to have fun with it and kind of let it go where it, it was different every night Clarence would come up with some you know some favorite rhythm lick and then I'd join in and we'd try to take it from there and then Skip would come in with he was studying Nichiren Shoshu Buddhism at that point and chanting every night and reading his chant book and which had a lot of uh, uh, interesting cadences to the chants and so he he put those to the bass and that would inspire us and we there were times when it would just take off and like I say it'd have a life of its own um, the problem with with uh, Skip and I doing 16 minutes or a long bass and drum solo is that the other lads uh, grew to depend on that for a break and they might wait in the wings a little longer than they should wait. And, uh, you know, Skip and I would look at each other and say, good God, this must be hell. These guys are not coming back and we're done. We're going to have to take it somewhere else. So in a way, uh, it may have been good because it, it forced us to find other, other sort of themes, uh, kind of on an earn-as-you-learn basis. But... Yeah, there was Skip was very uh, spontaneous, and one night at the Fillmore, Fillmore East, I particularly remember him throwing his bass in the air, way up in the air. He had a long cord on it because he would prance back and forth on the stage, and uh, in the middle of our drum bass solo, he I, I went around the drums and hit the sp the, the crash to see his bass launching up into the air with a cord trailing off behind it. And there was this, it seemed like a, a time slowed down. And I thought, what's going to happen now? And it came right back into his hands, right on the beat. And the whole house was on their feet. It, it was amazing. It's the only time he ever did it. Never did it again. I said, when are you going to throw your bass up in here? He said, oh, it's spontaneous. It either happens or it doesn't happen. 